we are doing that chapter options in derivatives in which last class we started discussing about the option valuation models please settle down settle down we started discussing about option valuation model in which we did one sum in the binomial model of option valuation we have to discuss some logic behind the binomial model once we complete that we'll discuss today risk neutralization model two period binomial model and then black scholes model for option valuation if we have time we'll enter into theoretical boundaries of option with dividends given in the problem okay option valuation with dividends will be the next stage of discussion if we have time we can have an introduction about that particular concept also please stop talking request once we complete the option valuation with dividends we have only one more concept called as american options probably thursday we'll be completing the chapter options and then start with the next area called as futures now let us summarize what has been discussed in this option chapter before we proceed further number 1 option is a contract between a holder and a writer a call option gives its holder a right to buy an underlying asset at an agreed price called as strike price on a particular date called as maturity date the put option gives its holder a right to sell a particular asset called as underlying asset at an agreed price called strike price on the maturity date writer of a call option is having an obligation to sell holder of a put option writer of a put option is having an obligation to buy there are three prices for the underlying asset spot price strike price and then the future spot price price what which the underlying asset is trading today in the market is called as spot price the agreed price for a future transaction today we call as strike price and the actual price at which it is trading in the market on the maturity date we call as future spot price the option will be exercised or lapsed by the holder he will decide by comparing the future spot price with the strike price if the fsp is more than the strike price call option will be exercised applying a mind or not he has a right to buy at a lower strike price a share worth higher fsp hence fsp more than strike price call option will be exercised when fsp is less than strike price put option will be exercised because he has a right to sell at a higher strike price a share worth lower fsp other words the in other way the options will be lapsed when an option is exercisable it is said to be in the money option is lapsed it said to be out of money indifferent it is said to be at the money these options can be of two types namely american and european options what are we are discussing are all european options only European options can be exercised only on the maturity day. American option can be exercised any time during the maturity day. Bo both options, the holder pays a writer a price for the option. That price for the option we call as option premium. Even call as option value. Value of an option is the premium which we pay for that particular option. We discuss basics in options where we saw what is break even FSP. break even fsp is the fsp on maturity date at which the option holder earns nothing it is given by the formula strike price plus premium for the call option strike price minus premium for the put option then we discuss about option strategies we can just take a combination of positions in call and put options to create a pay off patterns those are all called as option strategies namely we discuss about long straddle short straddle long strangle short strangle bull spread with call option bull spread with put option 
they are spread with corn option, they are spread with wood option, butterfly spread, etc. There are so many other option strategies also. If we just go to the Investopedia, in what net we can see so many option strategies. Like we have a corn dot spread, we have box spread and so many that is covered, called covered, put. So many strategies on that for just information sake. One can go, we know how to read the strategy is not. If you can just understand that, they will give you along with the diagrams and shapes. There are so many other options, strategies. We are not discussing for two reasons. Number one, it is not worth the discussing because simply again again we are going to find out the payoffs and see the patterns only. That requires observation, not the teaching in the classroom. Right or not? The second reason is these spreads are only very regularly asked in the examination. That's the reason why I have not discussed options strategies there are around say 15 to 16 strategies that is available in the net these strategies are frequently used by traders to trade in the option where they earn in some cash flow patterns everybody following or not next then we discuss about the next small concept called a short selling and then continuous compounding short selling means selling the share today and buying the share later Without holding a share, sell the share today and then later buy the share. How it is possible? Borrow share and then sell. Later buy the share and repay the, the lender of the share his shares. This is what we call as a short selling. We will discuss this more when we discuss options with dividend later. Continue and we said call, call option mainly derives the value only due to the short selling possibility. We saw the Strategy also, short sell a share and then what? Hold a call option is a very natural strategy. Can you see? Next. Then we discuss about the next area, the theoretical boundaries of a call option and put option. What can be the minimum value of a call, minimum value of a put? What should be the maximum value of a call and maximum value of a put? Very regularly asked examination time. Tell me, minimum value of a call option, what are the formula? Spot price minus present value of strike price. What are the minimum value of a put option? Present value of strike price minus spot price. What are the maximum value of the call option? Spot price. What are the maximum value of the put option? Present value of strike price. Maximum value will never happen. Rarity, great, fool only will be trading in what? Such value. But minimum is generally possible. Above that only we have the arbitrage discussion. Can you see? Now, minimum value of a call is spot price minus present value of strike price or not? If actually in the option market, we see the call option trading at a premium below the minimum value, then what we will do? We will go for an arbitrary strategy. Tell me the strategy here. Hold the call option and then what? Short sell the share. If the actual value of the call is more than the maximum value of the call option, call is overpriced now, what a strategy? Write a call and then buy the share today. Yeah, right or not? The write a call, buy the share today we discussed now. And then we have as a portfolio in the binomial model. Write a call, hold the delta shares. In the now. Next is third strategy is when the put option value is below the, let's say the minimum value. Tell me put is over price, under price, under price. What I should do? Buy the put option and then buy the share. Or hold the put, hold the share is a strategy. I don't know. And if the put option is above the maximum, one or two strategies, one. What is the strategy? Write a put option that is more than enough. You have seen how the arbitrage profit should be made. Once that is discussed, then we move on to the next discussion called as put call parity equation. What we discussed is, there are three assets which can be seen in the market or three securities that can be seen in the market. What are three securities? Share of a company, option on those shares which can be call option as well as what? Put option. So, share is uh, traded in the share market. Options are traded in the F and O segment where we have call option as well as what? Put option. What the put call parity says is that if the two options, call option, put option is written on the same share, is having the same underlying asset and they have the same strike price and they have the same maturity period. In that case, the share, the call option price, the put option price should satisfy a parity. Call as what? Put call parity. What is the put call parity? VC plus present value of strike price is equal to VP plus VS. VC means value of the call today. VP means value of the put today. What is VS? Value of the share today. 
So all these three prices can be seen from the options and share market. Take those prices and put it into this equation. The equation should tally. If the equation doesn't tally, what happens? Arbitrage exists. How to make the put call parity? Arbitrage has been done in two ways. Okay, where portfolio A is undervalued, where portfolio B is over undervalued. Both ways were done a put call parity problem. And if I remember my memory is right, I gave one problem as Homer. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Those who have done that some raise your hand. What happened? As usual. Okay, please. Try it. Now, I can say one thing. You are understanding this. These chapters at the time of learning may be a little bit difficult. No scope for original thinking. No for scope for what? Original thinking. Everybody, everything has been what? Structured and what given to us. You need not have an alternate solution. The solution is what? Same for everybody. We have the steps predefined. Yes or no? If you master that chapter, there is less uncertainty in the examination regarding answering these questions. I think you are understanding it or not now. Please spend time. Shh, please. I also said you should be revising and coming throughout the derivative segment. One should be having a consistent revision process. I will be lost in that discussion sometimes. Okay. Can you proceed? Now. Once we completed the put call parity discussion, I said put call parity arbitrage may exist. They may ask another type of problem where they give you two values and ask you to find out the third one. Balancing being a problem and all option valuation models will be satisfying the put call parity equation is what we have discussed. Now, then we started discussing about the option valuation models. Please. Now, see. Till put call parity, we did not value an option. We discuss about the option value. We did not want value an option. We said an option value should not be below this. An option value should not be above this. Option values, call put share price. If I put, it should satisfy what? Parity. Okay. So in that case, I am not cornering one value for an option. I am only saying it should not be like this. It should not be like that. It should be satisfying all these things. That is what we said. We did not get into the mode of what valuing an option. Shall we had a valuation model? So no, Gordon model or Walters model, etc., etc. Like that, we wanted a model to value the option. The model may be right or wrong. That is, what we get may be ultimately right or wrong because valuation is all about future only. Nobody can predict future one accurately. But that should be a method of valuing the option. So that was very elusive for most of the researchers for a very long time. And then they started finding out models for valuing the options. Where we have four models, namely binomial, risk neutralization, two-period binomial, and then Black-Scholes model. We had a very basic discussion that was very important to understand the logic of the models. The discussion is option in a value, the cash flows can be understood with the help of the FSPs. But the problem is the discount rate. Because unlike any asset, value of an option is what? The present value of the future benefits. So in that case, I have to discount it. So the discount rate was a problem. The reason is... I cannot discount using a risky rate because option derives the value from the underlying asset. The underlying asset is already discounted for what? Risk. I should once again not discount the option for the, the risk. So in that case, everybody agreed that we should be discounting the options only using risk-free rate. But the problem is, if I want to discount using risk-free rate, the cash flow discounter should have no standard deviation. Should I have what? No standard deviation. Standard deviation measures what? Risk. No standard deviation means what? Always it is the same number only. It should not change. For example, a call option may be lapsed. The value can be 0 after 3 months. Exercise value can be 11. In that case, 11 also can happen. 0 also can happen. So what we will normally do? You assign some probability for what? 11 and 0 and find the expected value to discount. Yes or no? In that case when you assign probability then that expected number will be having a standard deviation or not when it have a standard deviation then i should be having what a risky rate to discount i cannot use a risk free rate everybody understanding it up. 
என்னையா புரிஞ்சுதான் ஸோ இஃப் இட் இஸ் லெவன் எஃப்எஸ்பி இஸ் ஹண்ட்ரட் இட் இஸ் லெவன் எஃப்எஸ்பி இஸ் நைன்டி எயிட் இட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ வாட் லெவன் மீன்ஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் லெவன்னா இந்த மீன் ஆல்சோ வில் பி வாட் லெவன் சிக்மா வில் பி வாட் ஜீரோ ஐ கேன் டிஸ்கவுண்ட் அட் வாட் ரிஸ்க் ஃபிரி ரேட் எவ்ரி படி அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் இட் ஆன் நாட் ஸோ இஃப் ஐ ஹாவ் டு யூஸ் ரிஸ்க் ஃபிரி ரேட் த கேஷ் நோ விச் எம் டிஸ்கவுண்ட் ஷுட் பி வாட் Sutton. You should have what? Zero sigma. Should be having what? Zero standard deviation. That was not possible for an option because option can have various possible values on the maturity date depending on the FSP. So no. Now, then you cannot say, so then let us discount at what? Risky rate. There is also a problem because that comes only from what? The sham price. It is already there in the spot price. The risk has been discounted. Everybody following on. இதை புரிஞ்சுதா நான் இந்த கேஸ் ஹவு டு மேனேஜ் ரிஸ்க் ஓன்லி தே ஸ்டார்ட் அட் டேக்லிங் சார் ரியலி குட் மாடல்ஸ் ஆர் ஐடியா ஸ்கீம் ஒன் ஆஃப் த மாடல் விச் வி ஃபினிஷ் டிஸ்கசிங் இன் த எஸ்டர்டேஸ் கிளாஸ் இஸ் வாட் பைனாமியல் மாடல் சம் டிஸ்கஷன் ஆஸ்ட் பி மேட் ரிகார்டிங் த ஸ்டெப்ஸ் இன் த பைனாமியல் மாடல் லெட் அஸ் கம்ப்ளீட் அட் டிஸ்கஷன் டூ ஒன் மோர் ப்ராப்ளம் இன் வாட் பைனாமியல் மாடல் ஃபார் அவர் கிரிப் ஓகே அண்ட் தென் கோ ஃபார் த நெக்ஸ்ட் ஏரியா கால் அஸ் ரிஸ்க் நியூட்ரலைசேஷன் மாடல் நவு டில் நவ் கதர் இருக்கேன் பட் சாப்டர் ஆர் யூ ஃபாலோயிங் அண்ட் நாட் We are doing it very elaborately and very deeply. Are you all following what I am saying now? Next. Let's go to the next. Binomial model. Just to have a yeah, flow, we will summarize the previous um, discussion. I think I have copied the solution. We will summarize it and then discuss two points in the binomial model before I go for the risk neutralization model. Everybody, can we start up? Now, see. We, I think we are doing question number 22. Uh, Question number 22, please. Now, let us quickly summarize this binomial model problem before I proceed further. Now, stop talking. We did 22A. All of you participate. I am just raising for you. What is the spot price of the asset? 100. That is where you get this number? Share market. Today, the share of this company is trading in the market. How much it is? 100. What is the strike price? Where it can be seen? in option market they give the option contract terms or not the term of this option says what strike price is 97 please let us assume this as a call option strike price now fsp that is a possible future spot price on maturity date can be 90 or 180 it is not 90 to 180 it is what 90 or 180 binomial can take only two values and not a range of values can i say please and the term of the option is 3 months the interest rate is 12% this is all the details given okay now tell me binomial model we discuss with the portfolio we discuss with what portfolio can tell the can tell the portfolio assumed by the model write a card or the portfolio write a card and hold delta shares you can tell me the portfolio write a card and hold delta shares delta means some number of shares okay we have to find out in a step 2 later tell me how many steps are there six steps tell me what is step number 1 change in value of call and change in fsp step 2 is what delta shares formula is what change in value of call divided by change in fsp step 3 is what future value of the portfolio step 4 is what present value of the portfolio step 5 is present value of delta shares step 6 is the value of the call option that's point is so no now let's once again redo this problem quickly no need to copy just participate now okay step 1 is change in vc and change in fsp here the word value of the call means the value on the maturity day is so no because uh, that if i discount i get the value today can i say now situation 1 fsp can be 108 or what 90 suppose fsp is 108 you are a holder or writer now our portfolio is writer kalna you are a holder or writer writer you will decide other party decides he is having a strike price of what is strike price having a 97 is a strike price of 97 the other party is having a right to buy at 97 yes share worth what 108 will he exercise a right yes for him the value is what 11 for me the value is what minus 11 because i lose 11 rupees because i am forced to sell at i am forced to uh, that is a sell at 97 yes share worth what 108 am i right or not now 
Second case, suppose the sharp rise is 90. Will my holder exercise or lapse? Lapse. So what is the value of the call to him? Zero. My value also is zero. Now the FSP change is how much rupees? 80. The call value change is 11 rupees. Point number one, accept or not now. Step two is what? Delta shares. Tell me what the formula for delta shares. Change in VC divided by change in FSP. Tell me the number here. 11 divided by 18. That gives you how many shares? 0.6111 shares. Is that delta shares? Am I right or not? No. Step 3 is what? Future value of the call option. Okay, future value of the portfolio. Now, in my portfolio, how many items are there? Two items. One is what? Call writing. Another is what? Share holding. I am holding one share or 0.6111 shares? 0.6111 shares. Okay. On maturity day, let us see the worth of my portfolio. First is situation one. FSB is what? One not day. When FSB is one not day, if I hold one share, what is my wealth? One not day. I hold how many shares? 0 0.6111 shares. On after three months, my wealth is how much here? 66 due to share holding. Yes or no? No. I'm also writing a call or not. Will other party exercise or lapse or exercise? He'll be having what? 11 wealth. I'll be losing what? 11 rupees. So what is my overall wealth after the three months? It is going to be 55. If the FSB is what? 108. No, no, sir. FSB is not 108. FSB is what? 90. In that case, if I hold one share, what is my wealth? 90. I hold how many shares? 0 0.611 shares. What is my wealth here? 55. The call is worthless. The portfolio value is 55. Respond yes or no. no. Whether the FSB is 1 or D or the FSB is what? 90. My portfolio gives me what? The same value of 55. The future value of my portfolio has zero standard deviation. You take the mean here, yeah? 55 plus 55 divided by 5, 2 is what? 55 only. The expected value is 55. The stigma is also what? Zero. In that case, it is a risk-free portfolio, right or not? A risk-free portfolio should be asking risk premium or should not ask or should not ask. It should be discounted what rate? Risk-free rate. So I can discount this portfolio and risk-free rate. Yes or no? Now can I proceed further? No. So next is I have to calculate the present value of the portfolio. Okay. So... Okay, if the of the FSP, portfolio value remains same. From this could be understood that it is a risk-free portfolio, unmoved by future events. Can I proceed? No. Step 4 is what? Present value of portfolio. Future value is 55, discount by how many months? 3 months. At a normal discounting or continuous discounting, continuous discounting, always our chapter uses a continuous discounting. So it is, what into what? It is e power r, e power tr means t is how many months? 3 months. 3 by 12 is a term and rate of interest is what? 0 0.12. We all know that it is 1.0305. So I have to discount by e power tr minus tr minus tr. So it is 55 divided by 1.0305 gives you 53.37. In the accept or not now. So the value of the portfolio today is what? 53.37. It is having one asset or two items or two items. It is having a shareholder. Day. Also, what? Call writing. From this 53.37, if I knock off the value of the share, uh, what is the balance here? Value of the call. That should be the premium. In the parade or not? No. The present value of delta shares. How many shares I am holding? 0 0.6111 share. What is the spot price of the share? 100 rupees. So the value of my share today is how much rupees here? 61.11 because if I hold one share, my wealth today is what? 100. I hold only how many shares? 0 0.6111. My wealth is 61.11. Am I right or not? No. So I know the value of the portfolio is how much here? 55.37. In which the share value is what? 61.11. The balance in figure is what? Call value. The value of the call is 7. I can understand that you are all uh, somewhat uh, having confusion, so it is not 7.74, it is what? Minus 7.74, I'll speak about the minus later, everybody following or not? So just call it as what? 7.74, what is the value of the call option? 7.74, and they up to this binomial model steps, everybody have the clarity or not? Now, we can also find out value of put option using what equation? Put call parity, now I know the value of the call, I know the value of the share. I know the present value of strike price. Can't I find out the value of the put option or not? No. Write down. Next step. There's not step summon lapa. It is only a balancing figure. It is not a binomial model step. Can I buzz it? Write down. Next step. The value of the put option can be found out. Please. Shh. The value of the put option can be found out using 
the value of the put option can be found out using can be found out using what equation put call parity equation the value of the put option can be found out using put call parity equation the value of the put option can be found out using put call parity equation using put call parity equation now everybody can you proceed or not now for that we have to first calculate PV of x at the bar. We have to calculate present value of strike price. Write down. Present value of strike price is equal to PV of x is equal to. If I am right, strike price is 97. Yes. Now write down number 97 into e power minus P is how many months here? Yes. 3 months. Means 3 by 12 years. Into R is I think 0.12. Now number right down. Huh? Now. 97 into e power minus 3 by 12 into 0 0.12 which is equal to 97 into e power minus 0 0.03 yes or no and e power minus 0 0.03 which is equal to 97 into 1 by 1.0305 already we calculated earlier yes or no 97 into 1 by 1.0305 is equal to how much 94.5 94.13. Okay, I believe your numbers. 94.13. 94.13. Please tell me the equation. What is the equation? VC plus PV of X is equal to VP plus VS. Is equal to VP plus VS. What is the value of the call we found out? Let's step number 6. What is the number here? 7.74 plus. What is PV of X? 94.13 is equal to VP, we have to find out what spot price on the share? 100 rupees. Number called above? 100 rupees. Rearrange it. I'll get value of the put is equal to. Please tell me the number. Net down and tell me. 7.74 plus 94.13. What is the number? 1.8. 1.8. Okay, okay. Next one. 1.8 plus 94.13. Is equal to 1.87. Value of put is equal to 1.87. That's how I found out using what equation? Put call parity equation. Everybody respond. Are you able to understand it or not? No. See, before I go for discussion, let us consolidate by doing one more sum. Let's do what? One more sum. We now know how to do the problem. Yes or no? That should not be a problem. Let's do one more sum and then go for the explanation. Nothing great, very small explanation only. Can I proceed? Now. Take the next problem that is question number twenty two. Please, I am not going to do this. You should tell, I'll put the slide. Okay, we are going to do it together. Please, one practice. Okay, now. Take question number 22, second part. Now, all of you participate. Spot price, how much? 100. Strike price, 100. The maturity price can be 90 or 115. Term is 6 months. Interest rate is 10%. This is all the details given. Now, we have to find out the value of the call option. And then we can find the put value using what equation? Put call parity equation, balancing figure. Can we start doing it or not? Now, let's start doing it. Right? Question 22B. This is A, B, C and D. I'll give it as what? Homer. Okay. Now, take question 22B. Okay. Write facts. Write facts. Spot price. What is the spot price on the share? How much rupees? 100. Where you can get this number from the share market? Today the share is trading at 100. Strike price. In the option market, there is a contract with a strike price. How much rupees? 100 rupees. Strike price, 100. Can I proceed now? FSP. What is the future spot price? Tell me what is the future spot price? It can be 90 or 150. Can it be 90 to 93? No. It is not 90 to 115. It is what? 90 or 115. Term of the option. What is the term of the option? 6 months. The term of the option is 6 months. Interest rate is 10% per annum. Interest rate is 10% per annum. 
Again, remember what the strike price? 100. Right. That you have to remember it. Can I start or not? No. Okay, now write down portfolio. Unlike that. What is the portfolio? Hold a call, the write a call and hold delta shares. Write a call and hold. It is wrongly typed triangle. Okay, write a call and hold delta shares. Write a call and hold delta shares. Write a call and hold delta shares. Okay. Now, step one. Step one. Situation FSP VC. Situation future spot price and then value of the call. Situation one. Tell me what is the upper bound FSP in situation one? 115. 115. Answer my question. If the FSP is 115, who will decide? I will decide or my holder decides? Holder decides. He will exercise or will he lapse? Exercise. He has a right to buy at 100. A share worth what? 115. He is happily making how much profit? 15. For me, the call is what? Minus 15. As a writer, I have minus 15 as a call value. Can I proceed up? No. Next. Situation 2. FSP can even become what? 90. Will my holder exercise or lapse? Lapse. So what is the value? 0. Now, change. FSP changes by how much rupees? 25. The call value changes by 15. FSP changes by 25. The call value changes by 15. Am I right or not? Now, first step over. Step 2, delta shares. You have to participate and do along with me. Step 2 is what? Delta shares. Formula. Delta shares is equal to? Delta shares is equal to? Change in VC divided by change in FSP. Change in VC divided by change in FSP. Which is equal to? I want the number. What is change in value of the call? 15 divided by 25. 15 divided by 25. Is equal to 0.6 shares. Delta shares is 0.6 shares. Right below that, our portfolio is, right, our portfolio is, can I now define the portfolio fully? Our portfolio is what? Write one call option. Our portfolio is, write one call option, write one call option and hold, and hold, how many shares? 0.6 shares. Write one call option and hold 0.6 shares. And hold 0.6 shares. Can I proceed or not? Now, step 3. I forgot. What is step 3? Future value of portfolio. Step 3. Future value of portfolio. Future value of portfolio. Situation number. FSP. Share value. VC. Portfolio value. Situation number, FSP, share value, VC, and then portfolio value. Can we start or not? No. Situation 1. FSP can be what? 190. Sorry, sorry, 115. FSP can be 115. If I hold one share, what is my bill? 115. I am holding only how much? 0 0.6 shares. So my share value is 0 0.6 into 115, 69. My share value is 69. Will other party exercise the call or not? Yes. Due to which my call value is minus 15. Already in the previous step, my call value is minus 15. If I add, what is my portfolio value? 54. The portfolio value is 54. Situation 2. FSP is 90. FSP 90. Share value is 0 0.6 into 90, 54. Share value is 0 0.6 into 90, 54. What is the value of the call? Zero. It is lapsed out of the money call is always worthless. It is what? Zero. What is the portfolio value? 54. Portfolio value 54. Now, 
whether the FSP is 115 or 90, whatever may happen, my portfolio is always worth what? 54. Is it a risky or riskless portfolio? Riskless portfolio. This is a value today after three or six months. After six months. If you want to find out that today's value, how to discount by six months. Using what trade? Risk free rate. Now step three or step four? Step four. Present value of portfolio. Present value of portfolio. Present value of portfolio. 54 into 54 into e power 54 into e power minus 0.10 into 6 by 12. Now t is 6 months now, 6 by 12 years. R is what? 10 percent given. You know, read or not? 54 into e power 6 by 12 into minus 0.10. Now, which is equal to 54 into e power minus 0.05. 44 into e power minus 0 0.05. Now, can we do the e power minus 0 0.05 calculation? Write down next. E power 0 0.05 is equal to. Now, please let us do it together here. Yeah? Don't be ahead of me. E power 0 0.05 is equal to. Write the calculation. Is equal to what? 1 plus 0 0.05 power 1 by 1 plus what? 0 0.05 squared divided by 2 plus 0 0.05 cube divided by 6. 1 plus 0 0.05 by 1 plus 0 0.05 squared by 2 plus 0 0.05 cube by 6. I want a number. What number here? 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. 1.
value of the call plus value of delta shares present value of portfolio is equal to value of call plus the present value of delta shares value of the call plus present value of delta shares I know the portfolio present value to be tell me the number 51.37 51.37 is equal to what is the value of the call to be found oh, for value of delta share 60 value of call is equal to 60 minus 51.37 what is the number 8.63 value of the call is equal to 8.63 value of the call is equal to 8.63 now, how to find the value of put? Put call parity equation. Right on. Next step. We can calculate value of the put using. We can calculate value of the put using. We can calculate value of the put using put call parity equation. We can calculate value of the put using put call parity equation. We can calculate value of the put using put call parity equation okay shall I proceed or not now first of all what should I calculate PV of X is that right PV of X is equal to present value of strike price is equal to strike price into E power minus TRF strike price into E power minus TRF what is strike price 100 my number correct 100 into e power minus what is the term 6 by 12 into 0.12 100 into 0 0.10 e power minus 6 by 12 into 0 0.10 which is equal to 100 into e power minus 0 0.05 we need not do anything great already calculated 100 into what is e power minus 0 0.05 we found it here now 0.9512 100 into 0 0.9512 0 0.9512 is equal to how much? 95.12 the present value of strike price is 95.12 please next VC plus PV of X is equal to VC plus PV of X is equal to what plus what? VP plus VS VP plus VS now what the value of the call we found out? Tell me 8.63 plus 95.12. In number correct, PVX is equal to VP plus what the value of the share? 100. Short price is 100. Rearrange. VP is equal to how much? How much are you going to get? 3.75. Value of put is equal to 3.75. Whether put is equal to 3.75 or 3.76 as the case may be. Everybody is yes on home now. With this, we have completed how to solve a call valuation and put valuation using what model? Binomial model. Let us just ask some discussion for understanding the model, how they develop this model, and then we can just go for the next area called as risk neutralization model. Okay, now please. Shh. Now, the main problem for the valuers is the discount rate. Discuss now. I should discount at what? Risk free rate. But the problem is, if I straight away start discounting the option cash flows, the cash flows are what? Uncertain. I cannot discount a risk free rate. In the Pareta. Please tell me, yes or no? No, 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 no. See, our portfolio, put call parity portfolio different. In put call parity, what are the right hand side? Hold a share, hold a put. Now, this is a different portfolio. That is what? A different portfolio. I cannot use this portfolio for what? Using a put call party is altogether a different portfolio. So we should not use the delta share. Put call party should not be touched. Very sacred. So no, it's already derived here. Can you proceed or not? Now, please. Why you are talking? Can you proceed? Now. 
What was the problem? What is the problem? Tell me. In our class, talking problem. Yeah? For valuation, what is the problem? Tell me. Discount rate. The main problem is what? Discount rate. Please. Shh. Because option should be discounted at discovery rate. Everybody has a concurrence. The concurrence is because it raises the value only from what? Underlying asset. Since the underlying asset has been already discounted for risk, I should not discount once again the option cash flows for what? Risk. Because they will be considered risk two times. Are you in front of what I am saying? So we all feel in the heart that we should discount at what rate? Risk of rate. Problem is option cash flows, they felt it's difficult to discount straight away at what rate? Risk of rate because the cash flows has a standard deviation, 11 and 0 in the last problem, and this one I had what? 15, 0, etc. In, the, in, order. in that case, the cash flow has sigma, but I have to use what? The risk of rate. What is the option out? Yes or no? No. So what they did is they constructed in binomial model a portfolio. They constructed what? Portfolio. This portfolio is what? Risk-free portfolio. So they constructed a portfolio which happens to be what? Risk-free. They discounted the portfolio back. That's what what? Portfolio back. When they discounted the portfolio back, inside the portfolio, share is that, take that value out, the balance is the option value. Respond. Are you following or not? That is, they did not value the option separately. They valued the option along with what? A share also in the portfolio. Everybody follow what I am saying? They constructed a portfolio which is what? A risk-free portfolio. That portfolio consists of share as well as what? The option. Okay. So in that case what happens is from the portfolio value, if I knock off what? The share value. What I get is what? The option value. So here itself we can know that option is a derivative because what value the option takes depends on the value of the share. the share value is more now option value becomes what uh, much more more or less depends on call option or put option we'll discuss that later in black shoals understand what i'm saying uh, but understand that portfolio value is a riskless portfolio value in that share value is what independent uh, it is done in the share market take it out the derived value what value uh, derived value not the original value what value derived value is what the option value tell me option is the asset on its own uh, is a derivative uh, it does not have a value on its own. It derives the value only from what? The share value. Everybody, are you all following what I am saying? So this is called as a derivative instrument. Yes or no? Now, if I say in the first class, derivative instrument derives the value from what? Underlying asset. It's a very gentle shape, but people may not be able to visualize it. Are you all following what I am saying? But now, are you able to understand that the real option value comes only from what? The value of the share which is underlying in that option. I think I have the clarity or not. Okay, now the two question is number one, sir. How said this portfolio is what? Riskless portfolio. Are the proved already, but still we have to see why this is what riskless portfolio. Normally we heard call one share, one call one share. Why we have a call and then what? Delta shares. What is so great about this? Delta shares also should be known. Are you following what I am saying? Finally, in the step six, we wrote seven points on for as a cost a call value in what? First problem, and this problem has what? 8.63. Really, it is not seven points on for. Mathematically, number is what? Minus seven points on for or minus 8.63. How to interpret the negative? That's the next issue. It's on no. When I complete these two, I'll give a notes for this. Then we can just complete the binomial model before you go for the next one. Can I proceed or not? Now, see. Now. I am having a portfolio where I write a call and I hold a share. I hold how many shares? I am holding share. I am what? Writing call. Yes or no? That means I have two positions. One is I am a writer of a call. I am what? Holder of a share. How many shares? Forget it. I am a holder of the share. Writer of a call. Okay. Now, see. Tomorrow on maturity date, only two things can happen. Share price can increase, share price can what? Decrease. Two things here. Yeah? Increase in share price. Next is what? Decrease in share price. Okay. You will tell me a news. I should react. You should watch my face. I am not good at acting. Yeah? I am just saying through words. Okay. When a person tells a news, you can know how the other party feels by reading the face. Now. See what happens is, I come, that is you come to me and say, see the share price has increased, the share price has what? Increased. Tell me, I'll be laughing or crying. Share price has increased, I'll be laughing or crying. 
first instant is I will be happy because I am holding a share, that share price has increased. Yes, so I am happy, I put H for what? Happy and C for crying. Yes or no? So in that case, I am very happy because the share price has what? Increased, I am holding a share, my wealth increased or no? Yes, Immediately thought of another point, you as what? Hold that. Immediately started crying. Why? Because I return a Kalia, he will exercise it. Yes or no? I will lose income what? Call option. So I will be what? Want to cry on a UH means what? Unhappy by call writing. Yes or no? No. So when you tell me the news, I will laugh as well as what? I cry. I laugh as well as what? I cry. Okay, now. Okay, now. Because in this portfolio, I will laugh as well as what? Cry. When the share price increases, I'm happy as a shareholder, unhappy as what? A call writer. Please. Shh. Similarly, when the share price decreases, very happy because my holder will lapse. I escape. Right or not? In that case, I'm happy because of what? Writing a call option. Why am I unhappy? Because I am holding a share that value what? Declines and unhappy due to what? The shareholding. Respond yes or no. That is. The portfolio consists of items in such a way that it makes my portfolio stable. I am neither happy, I am not what? Unhappy. I am stable because one thing offsets or compensates the other. Everybody follow what I am saying? So, that is why the portfolio, write a call, hold the share. Write a call, what? Hold the share. In the point number one. Right or not? Now, the next point is, sir, then the portfolio should be write a call and hold the share. Yes or no? Why the portfolio is what? Write a call and hold the delta shares. In a question, bring that. Yeah, right or not? So the portfolio is not write a call, hold a share. The portfolio is what? Write a call and hold delta shares. Shall I proceed? No. First of all, why write a call, hold a share? That you are following or not? Then only when share price increases, Happiness comes from shareholding, unhappiness from what? Writing. Share price decreases, happiness comes from what? Call writing. And unhappiness comes from the shareholding. Anyhow, these two are going to compensate each other, leaving a portfolio stable. Hence, this portfolio. I don't know. Then the question is, sir, one call, one share. That is going to be much more better than Why don't I have a portfolio, write a call and hold one share? Why should I have write a call and what? Hold a delta shares. Is the next question that may arise. In the parita or not? No. Look at this, please. Problem number two itself, let us take it. Look at the step one. See, when the call value changes by 15, the share value changes by 25. In the parijana. Yes or no? That is, in other words, to tackle the loss due to call, I need not hold one share. It is enough if I hold 0.6 shares. Did you understand or not? Please, that is, if I hold one call and then what, uh, one share, tell me, due to the call, that is when the share price increases, I am unhappy of holding a call because it is going to give me minus 15, yes or no? The two share prices only understand that, it can either be 90 or what, 115. When the share price is 115, when the FSB is what, 115, look at the next slide, I am going to be happy as well as what, unhappy because it become 115, I am happy because my share now which I bought at 100, I have become how much, 115, I am happy as a shareholder, yes or no? I am unhappy as what? Call writer because I suffer what? 15 loss. In the approach that now. Please carefully follow that. To offset the 15 loss, I need not hold one share. I need to hold only what? 0.6 share because when the loss is 15 from a call, the share price gain is 25. Right about. In the current share price gain, how much is going to be? 25. In the Pareto order. So, in that case, to tackle the change, it is 15 by what? 25. If I hold the 0.6 share itself, I will be able to what? Tackle this particular number of 15 chains. Are you following what I am saying? So, again I repeat. See, I am holding, I am writing one call. Due to writing a call, I am going to suffer a loss. When the share price what? Increases. To offset that loss, it is not necessary that I should be having what? Uh, one share. It is enough if I am going to have what? Uh, 
the 0.6 shares because the proportion of the call volatility to the share volatility is not 1, it is only 1 to 0.6. For 15 rupees change, the share price volatility is how much? Yeah? 25. The volatility is 25 for what change? 15 rupees change. In such a case, 15 by what? 25. This is what I expect now. All these are what? Expected changes. The change can be either 25 or what? 15. 15 to 25 ratio is what? 0.6. Hence, I hold the delta shares. If I hold delta shares only, my portfolio will become what? Stable. If I hold one share, let us see what happens here. This becomes what? 115. Get about and this is what? Uh, minus 15. What will be the number here? 100. If you hold one share, this becomes what? 90. And this becomes what? 90. So the portfolio value may be 90 or what? 100. It becomes a risky, risky portfolio. In number, I don't know. To make it riskless, I need not have one share to tackle the call value. I need to have only what? 0.6 share to tackle what? The call value. Any you that? Now, the reason is also very obvious. The reason is, call value cannot become positive for me. Yes or no? Suppose, in this case, 90, he has to surely buy. What happens here? Then, I am going to sell at what? 97. A share worth what? 90. I will be having someone here. Everybody following what I am saying? See, again I repeat, holder of a call has a right to buy at 97. Suppose the share becomes what? 90. If it is a forward contract, not option, it is what a forward contract, he is also buying that. In that case, he should buy me at 97 rupees or not? Yes. In that case, I will buy from me a share what 98 what? 97. It will give me 7 rupees profit. Get up. In that case, then the, the, it will be what uh, exactly equal. Are you following what I am saying? But now it is not possible. Why it is not possible? The reason is, I am holding what? An option. Okay. Option will not allow you to go towards the negative side for a holder. So, it just stops at what? Zero. That means, look at this. For 15 rupees change in value, I have to tackle with a 25 rupees share price. I need not hold one share. It is in a way, hold what? A delta share. Either we call it delta hedging. Well, what hedging? Delta hedging for a share. Are you following what I am saying? So, now, this is number one. Why should I have this portfolio? Number one, this portfolio is what portfolio? Risk-free portfolio. From a risk-free portfolio, I can discount at risk-free rate. How this portfolio is a risk-free portfolio? Because if I'm happy as a writer of a card, I'll be unhappy as a holder of a share and vice versa. Happiness and unhappiness exactly offset each other. And the next issue is, for tackling a 50 rupees call change, I need not have one share. It is enough if I have what? 0.6 share. You know, the share change is 25, the call change is only what? 15. So to tackle a 15 rupees change, 0.6 share is what? More than enough. That is proved through what? The other number details on calculation. Please tell me, everybody following or not? Either point number one, we have discussed. Can I proceed to the next point or not? Now, next. Look at the last step, step number six. My portfolio value 51.37. Yes, sir. Yes or no? Yes, sir. My portfolio value how much rupees? 51 point? My portfolio value 51.37. My share value is what? 60. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Portfolio value itself is 51.37. It's a combination of asset. You know, one of the asset value is what? 60. Then the call value should be minus 8.63. Respond, yes or no? Yes. How to understand that minus 8.63? Very simple. Now, tell me, you are a holder of a call, writer of a call. Yes. Writer of a call is having a right or obligation. Obligation, obligation is an asset or liability. Yes. It is only one liability. You will never earn any money from it. Get away. Call option writer will not earn anything from, earn anything from the call because if something is favorable to him, the other party will allow it to lapse here. Right? He will not make, that is, a loss. The holder will not make what? Loss. The writer has either to suffer the holder's loss or want to have zero payoff. Writer can never make a money from an option. Yes or no? Yes, he is not a person who is having a right. As a having, having what? Obligation. Obligation is a liability. Yes or no? Yeah. Very simple. Had he held the share alone, his wealth is 60. Get away. Due to having a share and writing a call, his wealth has become what? 51.37. Due to call writing, wealth has eroded or not? Yes, that erosion in wealth only is ask as premium. Yes, 
he should ask the compensation part taking the obligation or not. The erosion in wealth only, he should be asking us what a premium. He said, look at this, I am 60 rupees wealthy. Yes or no? Due to you, holder only, my value has become what? 51.37. Due to you, I have lost how much wealth? 8.63 that depends what a premium that's the matter are you following what i'm saying so it is negative only i don't deny the call option erodes the wealth by how much base 8.63 it is a liability tell me what is a net worth what is net worth there asset minus liability portfolio is a net worth i have an asset called as what share i have a liability called as what call in that case net worth is what asset minus liability where i know the net worth i know the asset i know the liability is how much 8.63 so this liability if i have to undertake i should charge you how much is 8.63 nobody does any obligation for you free of call either premium discount for this option this part is all no now, that means we have accurately valued the option or not? Yes, now, we have valued the option. Then, you cannot say that, sir, then why the holder should have it, why the writer should have it? Understand that this value we have arrived by assuming that FSB can be 100 and 15 or what? 90. Okay, now somebody may be having another view saying that FSB can be either 130 or what? I say 80. He may have other view or not because both of us can have different view of the share. Right or not? In that case, for you the call may be what 8.63. For another person the call may be what to what 10.76. He feels that you are underpricing. He'll be what buying from you the call option. Yes or not? And I feel that he is overestimating. I'll be selling at what 8.63. Always market will move only there's a difference in perception. Are you following what I'm saying? So for both of us we have given a model for valuation. Yes or not? Now input data yours. Input data is what yours. You can say 115 and what? 90. I can say what? 125 and what? 80. We have difference in opinion of what? FSB. But both of us should have a model to value. Both should be having one model to value. Your value may be different. My value may be what? Different. You can become a holder. I can become what? Writer. All are perceptions. But both have a model to value. That model is first model is what? A binomial model. Share value is the same thing only. It's not what value is the share? D1 by KE minus C. One valuation. What is the value? Dividend growth model. Now, I have a model here. Yeah? You may perceive different dividend from the company. I may perceive what? Different dividend from my company. Input data is ours. Nobody can value any asset in the world. It is as good as valuing a god. You know, what is unknown can never be what valued. But people perceive. It's not people who want to perceive. Input data is yours. Model is mine. Are you what I'm saying? Mine or not mine, yeah? Model is what? Person who has told it, okay? In that case, input data is yours. Model is what? Mine. If you have an input data, I have a model for you to value. Everybody found out what I am saying? And how good is the value depends on how we have arrived at what? Input data. If you are good at forecasting, you are very great. Otherwise, what? You are not so good. Everybody are you what I am saying? You know, all valuation, all asset, that is what is going to be what? Valued. I don't say this is the correct value, that is wrong value. Nobody can do a value judgment. Get Nobody can do what? A judgment in value. But people can judge what? The model used in what? Valuation. How good is the value? Depends on how good the input factors are into the model. Are you following what I am saying? So now, have you understood the negative number or not? So tell me, what is minus 8.60? Explain me. This investor, due to writing of the call, is suffering an erosion of 8.60 rupees in his portfolio value, which is what is asking the holder as what? Premium to be paid for the call option is the meaning of that. Everybody, are you following what I am saying? This is a discovery of the call value or call premium. Obviously, we know the call value, we know what? Share value. The put should necessarily have what? The other value. If it is have a different value, put call parity exists, people can jump and make arbitrage. Everybody, are you following what I am saying? So this is how we should be valuing the call option and put option using what model? Binomial model. In the yeah, response, is so no. Yes, can I have a small notes in this regard or not? Yes, Just a minute, ma. Shh. Stop talking. Stop talking. Absolutely. No, no, no. Other I am saying here. Yeah. Now, two values, for example, 115, 90. I never use the word extreme value. I never use the word what? If I say extreme value, something in between also possible. It can either be 90 or 150. Model name what? 
binomial. Sir, it can be 18, 90 to 1, 150. And then you have to go for a different model. So now from here, the model starts what? Developing. It's either up and what? Down. Don't say extreme. Upper value, lower value. It is not what extreme value. Now, in between, value also will be what? Accept that it cannot happen. Any put it Prediction. Prediction, yeah? Okay, now. Please, this two values are what? Predictions only. You can have a different two values. You can have what? Different two values. Your value of call differs from me. Are you what I'm saying? It's only a prediction. Okay, please. Can I push it? Any doubt about it? Answer about Who said that? Because I am going to write 100 calls. How many calls are here? 100 calls. I have 60 shares. You know you make it into what? Large C. I make it into what? Large C. But I cannot round out this point C because accuracy will be last C. You know what I am saying now? If they are not getting point C, I have to do it in what? Large C. Uh, unless it becomes what? A rounded up number. You know what I am saying? Okay, I have to do only in lots, obviously. Make a point C is not possible. Now I have to buy in what? Uh, hundreds of lots. We will be getting the number. Okay. Suppose share is stated only in hundreds of units. Okay, in that what you do? Thou, write thousand calls and have what? Six hundred shares. In your so, but the model will not change. You cannot go for the market intricacies. It only gives you, you have to tailor it to what? The market requirement. Okay, now, please. Shh. Now, doubt can I go Can I go sit up? Now, we have to complete here. Write down notes. Please. Shh. Now, don't talk. You know, I don't know. Yes, it's a switch off. I'm indifferent here. You know, nothing is going to come to me. Can I believe? Switch off. Yes, I don't know. It's point number one. Point number one. Before that, option valuation model, any notes given? Huh? After put call pattern, any notes given or not? No. Let's have that, that notes also continue with this. Okay, right? Point number one. In the earlier segments, in the earlier segments, we discussed about, in the earlier segments, we discussed about The minimum and maximum values of the call and put, we discussed about the minimum and maximum values of options. We discussed about the minimum and maximum values of the options, comma, the values that should satisfy the values that should satisfy, that should satisfy what? Put call parity. The values that should satisfy the put call parity. But we did not have any model, but we did not have any model that helps us to value the options. But we did not have any model that helps us to value the option. That helps us to value the option. That helps us to value the option. Again, I say minimum, maximum, everything we said. What is the value? Somebody asked me, we don't have the model to what? Value the option. Point number two. In this segment, we will discuss. In this segment, we will discuss the option valuation models. In this segment, we will discuss the option valuation models. In this segment, we will discuss the option valuation models, which are the option valuation models, which are A, which are A, binomial model, which are A, binomial model, B, risk neutralization model, Risk neutralization model. C. Two period binomial model. Two period binomial model. 
two period binomial model d black scholes model d black scholes model d is black scholes model black scholes model b l a c k s c h o l e s black scholes model can i proceed next point number 2 or 3 3 value of an asset is present value of future benefits value of an asset is the present value of future benefits value of an asset is the present value of future benefits value of an asset is the present value of future benefits similarly value of an option is Similarly, value of an option is, value of an option is what? Present value of its future benefits. Similarly, value of an option is the present value of its future benefits. Is the present value of its future benefits. Can I proceed? This is a normal, any, any valuation. Okay, point 0.3 or 4? 4. four. The main problem in valuing option is the main problem in valuing option is the discount rate selection. The main problem in option valuation is the discount rate selection. The main problem in option valuation is the discount rate selection. Now one minute, I just forgot to tell you one more angle, the discount rate selection and then proceed. See, this formula is very famous for call option and put option. What the call option value? Spot price minus present value of strike price. The value of the call. Remember simply a call holder will get the right to buy at what? Strike price. And today he can sell at one price, short spot price, into short selling. The difference I can get the value from the call. In the parade or not now. Rumba simple. Yeah. If you don't understand this formula, the discussion I'm making for you to have clarity. Can, are you listening or not? Now. Leave this formula. Now. You are a call option holder. You are a call option holder. You hold a call to lapse or exercise or exercise. Okay. Now. On the maturity date, what the share price? FSP. What the strike price? X. The value of the call is FSP minus X. It accepted. Yes, this is the value of the call today. Why? After three months. Sir. What the value of the call today? It's present value. Yes or no? Now, what is the present value of FSP? Spot price. What the present value of strike price? Sir? PV of X. Gives the value of the call today in the Pareto. Please respond. Yes or no? Now, see, you are a call holder. You are what? Call holder. Why you pay premium to buy the call? To exercise the lambs exercise. I will exercise when FSP more than strike price. Yes or no? Now, on the maturity date, what is the benefit the call is going to give you? It gives me a right to buy a strike price. A share worth what? Higher value. So, FSP minus X is the benefit I earn from the call. Yes or no? For the benefit only, I pay the premium today. The premium is the present value of that benefit. Yes or no? Now, please discount it yeah, independently. Discount the future spot price. Today is going to be what? Yeah, correct. Huh? No. You know, I discounted what? KE. I don't discount at what? RF. I discount at what? KE. The share worth 150 rupees after 3 months is 100 rupees today. Now, the discount rate should be what? The risky rate. So, it becomes what? Spot price. So, no. And this should be discounted at what? Risk free rate. Because it's what? Agreed price. In, the, in that case, now tell me, spot price la, have a discount for risk or not? You know, the spot price is the present value of the future benefit that is discounted for what? KE. Spot price is already discounted for what? Risk. So, whenever I value the call, I should not discount. This cannot be discounted for what? Oh, that is it's not discounted for what? KE. Because already spot price when I take is discounted for what? Risk. One thing we should know that the option derives the value from what? Underlying asset. You know, this is an agreed number. It agrees value from what? Underlying asset. Underlying asset value is already discounted for what? Risk. I should not use once again what? A discounted for discounting the option cash flow. In the that now. But the dilemma is very great because it can be F first premium minus X also can become what? Zero. But this and this cannot be discounted risk free rate because in the this cash flow is risky. 
Yeah, nah, this number and this number is not same. Why it is not same? FSB changes. Yeah, correct. FSB what changes? I cannot discount straight away the option cash flow using what? Risk every rate. The problem is the cash flow are risky. So no, I cannot discount at KE because in that case this X also be discounted what? KE. But they gave me an agreed price. So no, that means I should find out the modus operandi where I should use what? Risk every rate. Also, I should not look abnormal in discounting risky cash flow to what? Risk every rate. That is what the models try to find out. Any apuni da? Na different angles so ne baare da. Are you following what I am saying? So, now what I discussed here? The main problem in valuing the option is the discount rate selection. Continue. It is agreed that, it is agreed that the option derives value from it is agreed that the option derives value from it is agreed that the option derives value from what? Underlying asset. It is agreed that the option derives value from underlying asset. Full stop. While valuing underlying asset, while valuing underlying asset, the risk is already discounted. While valuing underlying asset, the risk is already discounted. While valuing underlying asset, the risk is already discounted. You have to understand or not? While valuing underlying asset, the risk is already discounted. Hence, while valuing option, hence, while valuing option, we should not discount the risk once again. Hence, while valuing the option, while valuing the option, we should not discount the risk once again. While valuing the option, we should not discount the risk once again. We should not discount the risk once again. Thus, we always use, thus, we always use, everybody tell me, we always use what? Risk-free rate. Thus, we always use risk-free rate for option valuation. Thus, we always use risk-free rate for option valuation. Thus, we always use risk-free rate for option valuation. Everybody following or not? Next. Point number five. Point number five. Risk-free rate can be used. Point number five. Risk-free rate can be used to discount only those cash flows, risk-free rate can be used to discount only those cash flows, risk-free rate can be used to discount only those cash flows that has, only those cash flows that has, that has what? Zero standard deviation. Risk-free rate can be used to discount only those cash flows that has zero standard deviation. But option values, but option values differs, but option value differs, but option value differs, D-I-F-F-E or as option value differs. For example, for example, in the part B question, for example, in the part B question, in the part B question, the option value can either be, in the part B question, the option value can either be what? 15 or 0. The option value can either be 15 or 0 after 6 months. The option value can either be 15 or 0 after 6 months. So, always context understand. Here when I say value, I mean what value? Future value. The option value can either be 15 or 0 after 6 months. And if we say the expected value is average. And if we say the expected value is average. So, when something like 15 or 0, we expect extremes average, average. And if we say the expected value is average. 
it will have standard deviation it is a expected value is average it will have standard deviation if we say expected value as average it will have standard deviation and hence cannot discount using it will have standard deviation and hence cannot discount using and hence cannot discount using what risk free rate and hence cannot discount using risk free rate and hence cannot discount using risk free rate using risk free rate everybody following not now all this is a very profound discussion here how the valuation models have what evolved are you following what i'm saying we got discount using the risk free rate can i move to the next point or not now so now tell me what is my problem yeah i should discount using what risk free rate i cannot also discount using what risk free rate because i should discount using risk free rate because option value derives the value from what asset is already discounted for others yes or no why can't i use risk free rate because the option value deviates it can be 15 or what as zero no certainty the expected value of the call cannot be discounted using what risk free to find out present value because it is having a standard deviation in a parallel not that is why so long people are not able to understand the valuation is or no now it took so many years to want to crack this particular uh, jinx in valuing an option are you following not next point number three or four or five or six three. point number six point number six